Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk. This video, I just want to show you um, Umbrico and why I think it's so good and how I use it for my website. And just to get you interested in Umbrico and if you're just getting started with it, look at what you can do with it and um, maybe if you want to ask some questions or anything like that of what's possible. I'm not saying I'm an expert in Umbrico. But I know my way around it now, and uh, I'm a big fan of Umbrico, and I just wanted to show you all. So let's start off then. So I've logged into Umbrico, and I've got these uh, tabs down the left-hand side. So I have content, media, settings, developer, users, members, forms, and translation. Most of the time when I'm in Umbrico, I'm using content, media, settings, developer. Um, depending on how often you want to add new users to be able to log into your Umbrico, that's where you do this here and members part is for front-end members for the site. To show you the content I offset my home nodes here off the root and so that's just so that I can organize it well and I've got a home there so if I wanted to add another site to this I can add it at the same level underneath root and then I've got a shared content as well that any sites can use that are within this but obviously I only have one site at the moment so if we click on home you can see that I've got a few, four tabs up here. One is content, one is SEO, one is general properties, and one is properties. Now the properties tab is what you have on all pages with Umbrico. General properties are properties that I've added to help with these uh, pages. SEO tags, these are the usual SEO. So we've got like the meta name, the meta description, the meta keywords. So these are the normal SEO tags that you'd be looking for on a page and that Google will look for. And then you've got the canonical link. So if you want to change what the canonical link is and want to render it out in the source of the page, you can do. Usually I'll leave that one blank, but I've got that there just in case I want to change it. And then just uh, the site name. In here, we've got with the meta keywords, you can use a uh, tags property. And so if I wanted to add something else on here, so advice, enter, and then it just adds it on. So it's an easy way to add or remove tags for a page. And I can hit save and publish. So if I go to the front end, so a quick way to do that is go properties and then click on the first link. And then this is the actual live site. If we go to view page source, those SEO tags that I was showing you are all on here. So you have um, meta name, meta description, and meta keywords. And you can see these keywords here and advice is in there as well. So I'll show you the content tab of how I've got my site set up. So I've got a page title, and this is what shows up here. I've got a page intro, and these that shows up there. I've got a page banner image, so again, it's quite obvious. It's quite easy um, to do. Um, and also, you can see here, I've got featured posts. So I can add on my home page at the bottom here. I've got it to render out some posts for me that I want to show as my most popular ones. So I look in Google Analytics, and I see what are my most popular sites uh, pages. And then I go into my content, and I just I can pick them from here. So I can go into that, go to my blog. And then I can just search, right? Um, so if I do 10 golden, then that one comes up with 10 golden rules there. So that's for the home page. I've shown you the SEO tab. General properties, I've got an Umbrico Navi Hide. This is one that Umbrico recognizes, and it's basically is it visible or not? So if you tick this, then it means it's not visible. Um, Umbrico URL alias, this is one, say, if I wanted to. If I've got a page off the home page, you wouldn't do it on the home, but say if I wanted to, um, one of my blog posts, if it was doing really well and I wanted a short link to it, maybe if I want to refer to it in a video, um, I can go into the page, say one of my most recent ones, like this GA event tracking. I can go into this, go to the general properties, and I can put GA. I can just leave it as GA, so I can do codeshare.co.uk forward slash GA. So let's try that out. Save and publish. Now we've got it. So it's gone straight to that 
page. So it's a quick way of doing a, a short link or a pretty link, of it, however you want to call it. So that's the Umbrico URL alias property. I've got a blog post about that if you want to know more on how to do that. And it's glued from sitemap. So this is a property I've added um, if I don't want this page to appear in the sitemap, like the error page or you know the tools page, things like that. If it's not a real page, I'll just tick this to not it, um, include it in the sitemap. And enable AMP. AMP is the well, it's not that new anymore, but it's basically something Google does with its when it shows up in the newsfeed on a mobile device. If it's an article that's got AMP enabled, it's got a quick um, minimized HTML view of the page. So for fast loading, it's got you can have images on there and adverts as well, and uh, YouTube videos. But it just means that I've got this property here to say if it's suitable for AMP, then render the AMP link to show this page in the AMP format. So Google can pick that up and it can show that where it needs to. Now I'm still working on that as far as how it looks. And when I've got it working properly, I will put a blog post out for it. So I don't know if you've noticed this here. On the blog page, I've got a list view control here, which is basically showing me all of the children of the blog page. I can change it so that I can see them in the tree view, but because I've got so many articles, I don't want it all... Um, in that way, and like I've got 96 articles now, so I want them to be in a list view. It's easier to search for articles and things like that, so I can search for anything in here. So Umbrico URL alias, or just Umbrico, will show me all the articles that have got Umbrico in them. So I'm going to show you how I've edited my most recent article. So how to set up GA event tracking in three easy steps. So I'll put my name of the page there, and that comes out up here. And then I've not added a page title, so this overrides that. So if I wanted to, I could change that. That would override it. And I don't want a page intro because on the blog posts themselves, I just put posted by Paul Seal and the date that it went on. I've got my page banner image, so I can I use the post that I did. Um, if you go back to the home page, I use my article that I created for searching for all of the best free stock images, and you basically just you can untick that. I, I usually use the first two on this, but there are lots more down here as well for free stock images. And then I just put in the search box, um, so we could say dog or anything like that. And if you search, then it will open up those pages and it will bring you back images of dogs and things. So that's what I use for finding a good um, page header image. Put the grid editor and you can choose the different column layouts. Most of the time I'm just using the full width, sometimes I use a 50-50 and uh, again it abides with the bootstrap system for making it flow nicely on mobile and tablet screens as well as desktop. So in here I'm just editing content on these, I can choose a style format H2, this is just a P tag, I try and keep it simple with my markup, these are just a uh, unordered list. And then with my script, with my code, I just put in a pre-tag here around it, and that allows me to put code in there. So on the front end, if we go back to the, the GA article, you can see it comes out you know, in a code block, nicely formatted. I can choose uh, categories, so I've set these categories up myself, and I do that by going into the developer tab, going on to custom, and then uh, blog category multiplicker. I'll just discard the changes there, I don't want to change those. So blog category multiplicker, now I've got all my different categories. So I suppose I could put one on here about analytics. And then click add. And then save that. And then if I go to my article that I was on, so back into blog, uh, child items, Click on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tick that now because I've got an article that is relevant to that category of analytics. Save and publish. And what that allows me to do on the front end is if I refresh the page, I've now got a category that I can choose on here, analytics. And that then goes to the blog section and filters it by that category. So and that's another way to get to that article. And then I've got the blog post date. It's just a date picker and then the author. So I've got some people that are going to be doing some guest posts on my site soon. 
So when I do have them, I'll create them as authors and I'll be able to pick them on this. So when they submit any articles that they want to show on my site, I'll be, that's how I'll be able to pick them. So within the shared content area, if I just show you this, so got myself here. So I'm able to add my profile image, my bio, my social links to all my different accounts and then the website so when there are other authors that aren't part of CodeShare they'll be able to showcase their website URL on there as well and this shows up in here in this author block that goes at the bottom of each of my blog posts I've shown you SEO, it's pretty straightforward, I just put a, a brief summary in here and then when we're on the so when that gets shared it gets picked up from Facebook and Twitter it pulls through the meta description but also um, on the home page I use that little bit of uh, meta description on my posts just to pull that through just as this is the intro text for the article just a little summary really custom code so I've set this up so that if I want to um, on a specific article if I if I want to change some CSS for it or I'm trying to demonstrate something but I don't want it to be across the whole site I can actually enter the markup for that in the head here and the same for scripts that I want to appear at the top of the page that come get rendered at the top of the page to be run first or scripts at the bottom of the page so I've done that to allow myself the flexibility of that I don't do it often actually I did do it on the article that I was showing you about the searching for images. Let me just have a look at that because that's got its own custom markup. So search all of the best free images. So custom code, yeah. So this is a good example for this actually. So I've added some custom styles and I've added some scripts for the bottom. So this just basically um, submits the form for you. So if we go back to the article. So this allows this to work, this little form that I've done here. So, uh, I think I'm, bit, I'm waffling on, but I just wanted to show you the beauty of it and how easy it is for me to update now. So anytime I want to create a new blog post, all I've got to do is go to blog, click on the dots, new blog post, and then I just fill in these fields and then it comes out looking in the right order. The adverts are already on the template, so that will automatically come in. The categories, you've seen how I can add a new category and that shows up there. These are the keywords, so these show up at the bottom of each article. So if you were interested in any of these that I did on here, so if I do free, click on the free tag, you can see other articles that have got that same tag. Just basically it does a search of all my blog posts that share the same tag. Uh, so these are quite good posts actually to look for, just free resources that you can look at. So I've got document types, so the way Umbrico works is you create your own document types and you give it the properties that you want to. So you can create custom properties or you can create the default types of properties, so like this one here. Actually this is inherited from another one, so content based. So I like to work with composition rather than inheritance. So you can create certain lots of settings and then within a, a document type you can say all right, I want to use this, the properties from this type and the properties from this type and this and that way you can turn it on or off on different document types which is quite useful. I'll show you just editing like the base. So this is the Umbrico Navi Hide that I was telling you about. So it's just a true or false, Umbrico true or false property if we want to. We can change it to be of a different type. These are all the ones that you can use, the available editor, editors. I usually go to reuse and then I reuse some that I've already created. If you don't go to reuse and go to available editors, then it'll create a new data type, but you don't want to do that if you're just using the standard ones like text box and true or false. So let's just have a brief look at the templates. So this is using a view, uh, so it's um, like, basically it's MVC, but it's Umbrico's take on MVC and on this one I've got my web base template and that, this is just where I can tell it what layout to use and put the basic HTML around the content of the page and then I tell it what sections I want to render and this is a bit of script that I use in my GA post um, and I can, on this you can see that I'm using um, bundling and things like that I think 
if you go down to the bottom. Now, it, yeah, so scripts render bundles all scripts and things like that. And I think at the top I've got bundles GA, and I should have one for the styles as well. Quite easy to edit them within Umbrico. So if you do need to make a change, it's quite nice. Do it on your local version, check that in. But you can, rather than having to do a full deployment, you could, in theory, uh, edit it. It's quite handy for me on my personal site. Usually for clients, they will probably still do a full build and deployment. And then you've got the partial views. These are the little sections. So with this one, I give it, I get the categories, and then I render them out with the markup, just looping through the categories. And that's what you see here. So basically, it's built up from all of these little partial views. The templates are related to the, the pages that you create. They then go off and call the little mini sections, these mini partials, really. So that's how it's all set up. Um, and then you've got your style sheet. So if I needed to edit the styles, I can do that um, within Umbrico itself. Just normal CSS and just edit that in there. Let's move on to the developer tab. So I've shown you the data types. There's not really that much you've used from the developer tab, apart from macros. So I've done a macro for a blog post list item. So this here, what you can see, is quite common around my whole site. So I've got it on the, so this is on the search page. But if I go to the home page, they're also here. And I use them in the most popular posts. So it's a common thing that I thought, well, I'll put it into a macro. And that macro has got some parameters. So I've got a post ID, and what is the context of it? So is it just the home page latest? Is it the featured posts? Or is it just the blog post list? Or is it even the search? So I pass in the post ID and what context it's being used in. Then on my macro, um, partial view macro, I get that post information, and then I render it out onto the screen and that's how this works on these so all I needed really was the ID it goes and gets that from the Umbrico database and it puts the information on the page and so it's a consistent way of doing it Umbrico forms is good I'm not going to get into that one but if you just google Umbrico forms it's really powerful it's got dynamic forms so you can create forms on the fly it's really good so that was my brief but long introduction to Umbrico CMS um, I think it's really powerful you can do anything you want to do with it. Um, and you've only seen the web browser part of it, but a lot of it is I'm writing in C Sharp MVC, uh, which is what I prefer to do. So it's just an enjoyable content management system. I chose to use it for my blog just because it's what I do all day, every day for my clients. And it was a good chance for me to test different things out. Lots of things that I've done on my personal site, I've gone into sites I know it's possible to do and sites for our clients and also vice versa I get the idea oh I can do that on my site that'll benefit me there so I hope you like the video if you do please click on like and also subscribe to my videos and um, I look forward to creating more videos for you soon